Hi, I'm Steve. I'm a technician for a water conservation company called Conserve. Conserve works directly with water agencies to help them implement some of their water conservation efforts. And that's what I want to talk to you today about is one of those efforts. A program that the Inland Empire Utility Agency has, Conserve would come out, we would look at your current system for your irrigation. We'd look at your current sprinkler timer if you have a weather-based one already or not. If you have one that's not, then you could qualify for a weather-based sprinkler timer. This is a retrofit program, which means we remove the old equipment that's inefficient and we would install more efficient sprinkler timers for you. If you pay your water bill to one of these following agencies, then there's a good chance that you could qualify for this program. City of Chino, the City of Chino Hills, there's the Cucamonga Valley Water District, the Fontana Water Company at your service, the Monta Vista Water District, City of Ontario, and the City of Upland. All of these municipalities offer this no-cost retrofit program. So we're going to talk briefly today about the weather-based sprinkler timer and how that can help you in your water conservation efforts. And we're going to look at some of the latest in sprinkler timer technology. Well, as you can see, we have some sprinkler timers here. These are all weather-based sprinkler timers and something that we like to call smart sprinkler timers. So there's a type that connects to the internet via Wi-Fi, and there's a type that does not connect to the internet at all. And we're gonna go over that. So first, let's look at the non-Wi-Fi versions. Here we have a couple versions of sprinkler timers that do not go onto the internet. These are non-Wi-Fi versions. As you can see, this one here's got a dial. This one's got push buttons. Both of these communicate to a wireless weather sensor. They're still considered a smart timer, even though they're wirelessly communicating with the sensor and not with the internet. You don't have to have a Wi-Fi version for these. Why would you not want Wi-Fi? Well, if you don't have Wi-Fi at your house, if you're a landlord, and you don't want to depend on your tenant having the internet and these Wi-Fi, or these are put way out back and your Wi-Fi signal is not strong enough to reach to where the controller location is, then these non-Wi-Fi versions with the little wireless sensor is perfect for you. Now, these are both considered smart timers still, and they're also considered an ET sprinkler timer. What is ET? We'll get to that in a few minutes. But first, let's look at some of the Wi-Fi versions and why you might want to choose a Wi-Fi version of a sprinkler timer. Some Wi-Fi version sprinkler timers here that are going to connect to the internet. What is an advantage? Well, there is some pretty good advantages to this type of a sprinkler timer. You connect these via an app on your phone. So the app is communicating to the sprinkler timers. You can look at the water in history. How long did it water yesterday? You can look at how much it says it's gonna water in the future because it does predictive watering. It's looking at weather stations on the internet and it's gonna start making adjustments to how long it waters by looking at the internet. And it will show you on your app how long it says it's going to be watering on this Sunday when it's 87 degrees or it will also show you that uh, there's a high chance of rain and it's not going to be scheduled to be watering on Sunday. In the app, you can customize some of the zone names. You can name it whatever you want. Instead of zone one, you can say the front grass. You know, that's an advantage. You can use your phone with that app as a remote control. So you can walk around the house and out back or out front and just be using your phone and turning it on and checking your system with the app. That's a nice feature there. It can also alert you if you set it up to where it's not communicating to the valve as the wires have gotten disconnected for who knows what reason, the weed whacker, the dogs. Dogs love to chew on the wires for whatever reason. They do it, I see it all the time. But the timer can alert you through the app on your phone and tell you, hey, I've lost communication to that valve and the wiring, something's wrong with the wires. And let's, let's look at a valve right now so that you'll see what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so here's a valve. You can tell that it's electrically actuated because it's got the wires. And that's what we were just looking at, was referring to is sometimes these wires get cut or chewed on, right? And part of our job at, at Concert is to educate people on some common problems. So I'm gonna bring you in kind of close and let's look at a valve a little bit more closely. So here's a typical valve. You can see it has this little crank on here and you can turn off the flow of water just with this crank by turning that down. You can regulate how much water is flowing through the valve with this crank also. Now here's the solenoid. If you open up the solenoid just a little bit, it will turn on the valve because it's allowing a little bit of air in between and then the water flows through. Okay, so that is how the valves work. I'm gonna pull this solenoid off completely and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about as far as how these actually work. With the electricity coming from the controller, you do not have to be afraid of the electricity here because this is not your normal household electricity. This is only low voltage. In fact, with a couple nine volt batteries, I can turn this on. When it turns on, this little plunger right here, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm gonna show you. It turns on, the plunger goes up, it creates an air gap. That air gap is what allows the water to flow through. Sometimes a particle of sand will get in here and it will stick the valve open. And people will call and say, the controller's stuck on. I'll tell them, unplug the controller. It's still stuck on. Well, it, if the controller is unplugged, it is not pulling this plunger back. It can't. So therefore, either the solenoid is stuck or you've got sand in here, or the valve might just need to be replaced. So an ET sprinkler timer. Well, ET stands for evapotranspiration. Now your, your plant is gonna transpire and you're gonna have evaporation. So then those two words put together is evapotranspiration and ET just stands for that. So we have ET sprinkler timers. What does ET have to do with anything? Well, the smart timers nowadays are taking into account the ET factors, like not just the temperature, but actually like the wind speed. The more windy it is that day, the more the plant is gonna transpire. Just like us, my lips get chapped when it's real windy out, I'm losing moisture, same as the plant material. Also, it takes into account UV index, which is the ultraviolet light, then also known as solar radiation. The higher the UV factor is today, the more I better have some high SPF on me or I'll get sunburned same as the plant material, they're gonna lose more moisture out of the plant and out of the root because of the higher solar radiation. So it's taking into account temperature, solar radiation, wind speed, and humidity levels. The higher the humidity, the less transpiration is gonna take place from the plant material. So no matter which version you go with, the Wi-Fi version or the one that works with that little sensor, they're both going to be smart timers and they're going to work with the weather. So as it heats up, it's going to water more. How much more? Well, that depends on the temperature. Like let's say it's 100 degrees out. It's going to water the maximum that you said it's allowed to water. And typically the grass is maybe eight minutes. So it's going to water eight minutes. But on a day like today, it's only like 70 degrees outside it's gonna water quite a bit less. How much less? Well, 70 degrees, I'm gonna say it's gonna water about 40 to 50%. 40 to 50% of what? Of the maximum minutes that you set into your smart sprinkler timer or that we set into it for you. So the most it's allowed to water is the minutes that we put into it. So even in January, we're gonna come out, we're gonna set eight minutes. You say, wait, wait, not eight minutes in January. Yes, because it's gonna lower it all by itself. So it's only gonna water, you know, if it's really cold, it won't water at all. If it's um, 60 degrees, it's gonna water 20%. It's all gonna be a, a variety of factors on those ET factors, but it's gonna lower the minutes all on its own. It's not something that you need to go out and do seasonally all the time anymore. So let's say it's 100 degrees 
out right now, it's gonna water that eight minutes, but then it, it cools down for a few days. Well, guess what? You're gonna have some water savings because it's automatically gonna lower down. Let's say it only waters, you know, 70% for a few days, even in the summer because it cooled down a little bit. Well, during those few days, if it's only watering at 70%, guess what? You've got 30% of your water savings right there. Okay, so eight minutes is kind of an average but it depends. Uh, what's the percentage of your slope? We'll get into that in a little bit with the cycle soak. Also, uh, your water pressure. And then it all depends on what type of sprinklers you have, what kind of soil type you have, what type of grass do you have, and the precept rate that's coming out of this, the sprinklers and the spacing. And so there's a whole variety of factors. So it's not just eight minutes for everybody. So with a smart sprinkler timer, using the ET factors, it's going to change how much it waters daily. It's just like you going out to the controller every day and making adjustments based on the weather. Well, guess what? Now this is going to do it for you, not seasonally, but daily. And I don't know if you can tell very well, but this is a pretty significant slope right here. If you try to apply eight minutes of water to it all at the same moment, it's going to start shading off and it's going to end up over here into the street or the sidewalk. So and one of our conservation efforts is to educate people how to properly water on slopes like this. One thing you need to do is take the, if it needs eight minutes of water, water for four minutes. You're going to do a cycle. Then you're going to allow it to soak, soak for an hour. Then you're going to do another cycle. And so we call this cycle soak. So we're going to take the eight minutes and cut it in half instead of trying to absorb all that water into this soil in eight minutes we give it two four minute cycles well i'd like to address some commonly asked questions one is well how do i qualify for this program you need to have an existing sprinkler timer that is not a weather-based sprinkler timer so it's hence the word retrofit, right? We're gonna remove the old and put in the new for efficiency. Another common question, is, well, what happens if the power goes out? Well, the sprinkler timer will not water without the power being there. So let's say you get one that's via the internet. It's just like having your smartphone. When you leave the house, you come back, it joins the internet automatically. Same as the controller. Once the power's back on, or the sprinkler timer, <laughs> once the power is back on, it's going to find the internet again very quickly and it'll be back up and running. But without power, you're not going to be watering, okay? So you'll, you'll know if you're not watering, you'll start seeing the yard getting stressed. Okay, a common question here. What happens if the internet goes down? Well, internet does go down at times. So the controller with electricity still, it's going to water because it's been looking into the future and it knows how much it should be watering based on the temperature because it's looking at the forecast and it's doing predictive watering. So even if it's not communicating to the internet right at this moment, it still knows, oh, it's Thursday, it's five o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna water and I'm gonna water like it's 85 degrees out today because last time I communicated to the internet and saw the weather channel or the weather station it's communicating to, it said that Thursday it's going to get a high of 85 and today it's going to water just like it's going to be a high of 85 degrees. So let's look at some other common questions. We'll go outside and look at those. So the water agency is going to have control of my sprinkler timer. No, they don't have any control of your sprinkler timer. The water agency knows how much water you use because they bill you each month for it. But they're not going to, they don't have an interest in taking over control or the time to be taking control of everybody's sprinkler timer. Water agencies have some restrictions, like what time you should water. That's because they don't want you watering in the middle of the day. If you are watering in the middle of the day, then you're losing a lot of water through evaporation and it's just not getting down into the root. We always recommend early morning before the sun comes out and starts heating up everything, let that water get down into the root of the plant material. If you're getting mushrooms or something in the lawn, you're watering too much. As far as days go, sometimes they limit days by address, like the last digit and the address, odd or even, you know. So we set the timers 
to do exactly what you want it to do. And now the timer is going to do exactly what you set. It's going to water at the time that you set. It's going to water on the days that you set. And it's going to water the maximum that you set it's allowed to water when it's really hot out on that day. So does it shut off in the rain? Of course. It wouldn't be very smart if it didn't turn off in the rain, right? Well, I hope you found this video helpful in learning what a weather-based sprinkler timer is. At our website, it's conserveinc.net. Conserveinc.net. You're going to find other tutorials on other controllers, sprinkler timers, that are going to also be a great aid for you in learning how to effectively water using a weather-based sprinkler timer. So on behalf of the Inland Empire Utility Agency, your water agency, and the team here at Conserve, we'd like to thank you for you watching this video and for you doing your part to help us conserve our most precious resource.